Hey, what's up guys? Brian from Zombie Guitar here. In this lesson, I'm going to be giving you eight facts about the circle of fifths that you may or may not already know. All right, some people don't even know what the circle of fifths is. Some people might know a little bit about the circle of fifths, but there's actually a ton of information in there, okay? There's lots of information that can be used for improvisational purposes, uh, for composing music purposes. There's just tons of stuff, okay? I actually have the circle of fifths tattooed on my forearm here. Some of my friends make fun of me about that, but whatever. I'm a music theory nerd. I don't care. I use it. I actually use the circle of fifths in live situations when I'm playing in unfamiliar keys. Sometimes I refer down to the tattoo on my forearm to kind of give me the answer without actually having to think about it, okay? So it's kind of like a little cheat sheet on my arm. Okay, so it's an extremely useful tool, and uh, with that said, let me get on to the eight facts about it. Okay, so the first fact here about the circle of fifths is one that you probably already know, but for those of you who don't know this, here it is. So if you look at the circle of fifths, the outer circle represents the 12 possible keys in music. There are only 12 keys in music. Each of the letters represents one of the 12 keys. Now the inner circle represents the relative minors of each of the possible 12 keys. So in music, every single one of the 12 keys has a sadder version of itself and a happier version of itself. That's how, that's basically how I uh, talk about uh, relative major minor combinations, the happier version and the sadder version. Okay, so the key of C major is the key of C major. Major keys generally sound happy. Okay, now the sadder version of C major is right below it, A minor. Okay. It's the same exact key, only it's the sadder version. Minor is generally sadder, major is generally happier. The reason they're the same key is because they share the same notes, okay? I can solo up and down the fretboard all day long in the key of C major, and I'm only using seven notes, okay? There's really only seven notes spanned all up and down the fretboard. I can solo up and down the fretboard all day long in the key of A minor, and I'm using the same exact seven notes, okay? A relative major minor pair can, uh, you know, they share the same exact seven notes as one another. So the outer circle is the happy version of the 12 keys. The inner circle is the sad version of the 12 keys, okay? Likewise, the key of G major, that's the happy version of that key. Right next to it, right below it, you see E minor. That's the sadder version of that key those two keys share the same notes as one another, all right? So that is the first fact about the circle of fifths. Okay, so the second fact about this circle of fifths is that in any one of the 12 keys of music, there are six diatonic chords, okay? Every single key contains six chords, all right? And they are grouped together in groupings of six on the circle of fifths. So let's take the key of C major, for example. Okay, the key of C major, the circled chords right here are your six diatonic chords for that particular key. C major is your one chord, F major is your four chord, G major is your five chord. Okay, that's the one, four, and five, the three major chords in that key. Your other three chords are the three minor chords. A minor would be your six chord, D minor would be your two chord, E minor would be your three chord. Those are the six diatonic chords found in the key of C major. Okay, now let's try it for another key. Let's take the key of A major, for example, okay? You see circled here is the grouping of six. A major's right top center of the grouping of six. So in this example, uh, A major would be your one chord. D major would be your four chord. E major would be your five chord. You have your one, four, five, the three major chords. Now you have your three minor chords in this grouping of six as well. F sharp minor is your six chord. C sharp minor is your three chord, and B minor is your two chord, okay? So that's those six chords for that particular key. This works for all 12 keys, okay? This is how the circle of fifths groups diatonic chords together. Now, this is useful for writing music, all right? So say you want to write a song in 
the key of A major, okay? Or F sharp minor. Same thing, happier version or sadder version. And you want to know the six diatonic chords that are available to you in that particular key. Well, let's try it out right now. I'm just going to kind of just make up a song, and I'm going to play those six chords, okay? So, A major to D major to E major to A major to C sharp minor to F sharp minor to B minor to E major back to the A, okay? So I could just play that. Boom, just wrote a song right there. Six diatonic chords, all right in the key of A major. Try it for all 12 keys, you're going to see that it works. That's your second fact. Okay, so the third fact about the circle of fifths is that it groups uh, one, four, and five chords together right next to each other, okay? The one chord being in the middle, the four chord being right to the uh, counterclockwise direction, and the five chord being right into the clockwise direction, okay? So, this works for both major chords and minor chords, okay? So, say you wanted to know the one, four, and five chords of the key of A major, okay? A is your one, D major is your four, E major is your five, okay? Okay, those three chords go together very nicely, okay? Most commonly used chords in any key, one, four, and five chords. It also works for minor chords, okay? The groupings are exactly the same. So say you want to write a piece of music that is now in a minor key. You want it to sound a little bluesier. You want it to sound a little sadder. So you don't want to be doing something in the key of A major. Now you want to do it in the key of A minor, okay? Same concept applies. Find your A minor. Move clockwise, that would be your five chord, okay, of the minor key. If you're now considering A minor to be your new one chord, okay, uh, the D minor would be your four chord, the E minor would be your five chord, okay, so. Okay, so one, four, five groupings work not only for major keys, but they also work for minor keys. The groupings are exactly the same for both, okay? Right in the middle is your one, clockwise is your five, counterclockwise is your four. Okay, so now the fourth fact about the circle of fifths is that you can use it to determine both uh, major thirds and minor thirds of any given note. All right, so if you look at a piano or you look at a guitar fretboard, a major third is always going to be found four half steps away from the original note. The minor third is always going to be found three half steps away from the original note, okay? So let's say you want to take the note C and you want to figure out what the major third interval is away from the note C. Okay, so find your note C. Here it is on the eighth fret. And then you count up one, two, three, four. Four half steps away from the note C is E. E is the major third of C. Okay, that's that's that interval. Now, if you want to determine what the minor third of the note C is, you count three half steps up, okay? So again, start on your C, count one, two, three, E flat. E flat is the minor third of C, okay? You can also use the circle of fifths to determine the same exact answer, okay? So if you want to determine what the major third of C is, you start on the note C right up at the top, and you move in the clockwise direction four notes. Okay, this is going to give you your major third. So C, move clockwise four notes away, you end on E. Okay, that's telling you E is the major third of C. Also, if you want to determine the uh, minor third of C, now you just move in the opposite direction, and you move three notes away. Okay, so start on C, move in the counterclockwise direction, three notes away, you end on the note E flat. Okay, E flat is your minor third of C. It's the same thing, okay? You can do that, you can look on a piano, you can look on your fretboard, or you can look on the circle of fifths to give you your answer, okay? 
try it for uh, A now, okay? Say you want to take the note A and determine what its major third is and what its minor third is, okay? So A, move four in the uh, clockwise direction. You're going to end on the note D flat. D flat is the same note as C sharp. Both of those notes are the exact same thing. That is your answer, okay? That's your major third interval away from A, okay? So A and C sharp, they are major third apart. Alternatively, if you want to find the minor third of A, you start on the note A, you move in the counterclockwise direction three notes away, and you arrive at C, okay? C is the minor third of the note A, all right? So the circle of fifths can help you instantly find your intervals, okay? Your fourths, your fifths, your major thirds, and your minor thirds. Very simple, okay? That's the fourth fact. Okay, so now the fifth fact about the circle of fifths is you can use it to uh, implement out-of-key chords into your song or chord progression that you are writing, all right? So you already know that you have six diatonic chords in any given key, all right? So let's take the key of C major. You have your six diatonic chords. You have your C, you have your F, you have your G, you have your A minor, you have your D minor, you have your E minor. Those are your six diatonic chords. You can go ahead and you can write a song using those six chords. That's fine. You probably already know that. That was fact number two about the circle of fifths. Now, what if you want to spice things up and you want to throw in some out-of-key chords? Where do those out-of-key chords come from? Do you just randomly select a random chord? Well, you can, but usually when you see out-of-key chords in a song, they come from the parallel minor key. Okay, so if we're in the key of C major and we want to borrow chords from somewhere else that aren't in that key, the first place you'll want to look is the in the, in the key of C minor, okay? So, uh, the grouping of C minor is always going to be right next to the grouping of C major chords in the counterclockwise direction. So you see your grouping of six here. Those are your uh, six diatonic chords for C major. The grouping right to the counterclockwise direction, those are your six diatonic chords for the key of C minor. Okay, so those six chords would be chords that you can pull from in order to implement them into your song. Okay, I'm sure you were playing a piece of music and in the key of C before, or maybe you were playing a song and you seen a B flat there, and you noticed the B flat didn't quite sound like it was in key, but it also didn't sound bad. It added just enough interest to be like, okay, well that was cool, you know. That's the whole purpose of borrowing chords from the uh, minor, from the parallel minor key, okay? So not only do you have your six diatonic chords, but you have, right to the counterclockwise direction, the six uh, diatonic chords of the parallel minor key from which you can borrow chords from, okay? Now that you know this, if you didn't already know this, you can go ahead and listen to Elton John songs and Billy Joel songs and all kinds of classic rock songs and now you're going to know where these out-of-key chords come from. More often than not, they come from the parallel minor key. Or if you're already in a minor key, you can borrow from the parallel major key. Okay, that works in both directions. So that is your fifth fact of the circle of fifths. Okay, so your sixth fact about the circle of fifths is the one that is usually the first fact taught to everyone when presented with the circle and that is that uh, it shows you the key signatures of each of the keys, okay? So starting at the top, you're in C. C has no sharps or flats in it, okay? That's all the white keys on the piano. It's just the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. There's no sharps, there's no flats. Now if you start moving in the clockwise direction, okay, each subsequent step that you move in the clockwise direction, you add a sharp to it, okay? So the key of G has one sharp, the key of uh, D has two sharps, the key of A has three sharps, the key of E has four sharps, the key of B has five sharps, okay? And that's how it moves in that direction. Then you get all the way to the bottom, that's your the weirdest key, which is just full of sharps and flats, that's the key of F sharp or G flat, whichever one you want to call it, okay? And that has six sharps in it. And the same thing works if you move in the counterclockwise direction, okay? So C at the top has no sharps or flats. If you move in the counterclockwise direction, 
we start adding flats, okay? So the key of F has one flat. The key of B flat has two flats. The key of E flat has uh, three flats, all right? And so on, all right? So that's how the circle of fifths arranges key signatures. That's why I put this as number six and not as number one, because as a guitar player, you probably don't really care about that. A piano player, a saxophone player, a clarinet player, a trumpet player, they may care about that because they don't have the uh, benefit of having movable shapes and movable chords and all that cool stuff that guitar players do. So they may need to, or not may, they definitely need to know that information, okay? As a guitar player, that piece of information may not be super important to you, so... But whatever, that's fact number six. Okay, so now the seventh fact is uh, another one which most guitar players probably won't really care too much about. This would be more applicable to other instruments that aren't movable in nature, like the guitar. Um, so if you want to know exactly which sharps or which flats are added to each key, the circle of fifths also gives you that information, okay? So as you know, the top C, no sharps, no flats. Now, if you are in the key of G, you know that you have one sharp, okay? What is the sharp? What note is sharped? It is the note F sharp, okay? So if you uh, move to the key of G, uh, I'm sorry, if you move to the key of D, you know that the key of D has two sharps in it. What are the two sharps in the key of D? Well, F sharp is in there, and then C sharp is in there. Okay, see how this is working? You're kind of moving back a few notes and that's where your answers are found, okay? Move to the key of, uh, of A. Okay, A has three sharps in it. What are the sharps found in the key of A? Okay, move back counterclockwise in your circle of fifths. F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. Okay, see how this is working? Key of E. E has four sharps in it. What are those four sharps? Okay, look at your circle of fifths. F, C, G, and D. Those are your four sharps found in the key of E. See what I'm saying? Now this also works in the flat direction as well. You can also use the circle to give you what you want to know. So, start on the top, C. C, uh, no sharps, no flats. Move to the counterclockwise direction. You are on F. F has one flat. What is the one flat in F? It is B flat. Okay, now you move to the key of B flat. That has two flats in it. What are those two flats? Okay, B flat and E flat. All right, now you move to the E flat. That has three flats in it. What are the three flats? B flat, E flat, and A flat. All right. Now you move to uh, the key of A-flat. A-flat has four flats in it. What are those four flats? B-flat, E-flat, A-flat, D-flat. You see how the circle of fifths is? It's all laid out for you right there, okay? It may be, um, you know, maybe kind of tough to remember the stuff like that, but whatever, if you have, have a printout, if you have it tattooed on your arm, whatever. You can refer to this whenever you want, and it's a very, very useful tool to um, just help you memorize this information. Again, fact number six and fact number seven. As a guitar player, you may not care about this so much. This may be much more useful to other instruments, but for uh, the purpose of uh, completion of this lesson, I figure I would add it anyway. Okay, so that's fact number seven. The circle of fifths gives you you know, which sharps and which flats are found in each key, okay? And they're organized as I just told you. All right, so uh, on to the last one. All right, so the eighth fact about the circle of fifths is simply just a memorization tip, all right? Now, it may be kind of tough to memorize all 12 of these keys and the order of it. Um, you can make up mnemonic devices if you want, but the way that I've always been able to uh, stick this stuff into my head and really get it in there is to simply recognize that the word bead is located on both the sharp side and the flat side of the circle of fifths, okay? Now, I'm pretty good, I was always pretty good at memorizing the sharp side, I guess because those are keys that I play in more often, but, um, you know, even if you have trouble memorizing that, just locate the word bead, okay? So... You are going to have to remember that C is on the top, 
you're going to have to remember that F is right next to it and G is right next to it, okay? And then you're going to have to memorize the one on the bottom, which is F sharp or G flat, okay? So if you can memorize just that, which is just, you know, four of the 12, then you just have to see the word bead going in both directions on the flat side and the sharp side, okay? So starting from the bottom and then moving in the counterclockwise direction, you see how it says B, E, A, D? There's bead. If you're on the flat side and you can't remember the order of flats, well, right next to the F, starting on the B flat, you have B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Bead. All right? So that helps me. I know some people have some funky uh, mnemonic devices like cats go down again, whatever. However they want to remember it, I think it's a lot easier to just simply remember the word bead, know where bead is located on both sides of the circle of fifths, and that makes it very, very useful for memorization purposes, okay? So that is the eight facts of the circle of fifths. Um, you know, print out a copy of it. Hopefully uh, you found this information helpful. I know I did, especially when it comes to composing music. It makes everything makes so much more sense when it comes to writing songs because now I have a little cheat sheet right in front of me telling me, okay, those are the chords that I have available to me and everything just works, all right? So um, that's it for this lesson. Hope you enjoyed it. Leave me a comment, shoot me a message, and uh, keep watching. Thanks a lot.